what's going on YouTube and welcome to another Season 7 League of Legends Champion Guide. Today I'm going to be covering Jungle Udir, the Spirit Walker. Our rage is beyond your control. So why exactly would you want to pick Udir besides the fact that you're a freaking man bear? Well, he is a champion that's pretty strong at all phases of the game. He starts off as a really strong duelist and he remains that throughout the whole game. He's also got really strong objective control. He's definitely a kiteable champion, but when he forces people to come into areas, he can be a pretty devastating champion. He's also a champion that has multiple build paths. You can go for a carry build, a bruiser build, or a tank build and be very effective throughout the game. He's also a champion with pretty strong sustain and a shield, so getting through the jungle is not going to be too big of an issue. If you start getting focused in team fights, you can keep putting on your W shield and be a pretty tanky champion. Finally, he's also pretty damn easy to learn. As long as you understand that your E is for gap closing, your W is for tankiness, and your Q is for damage, you're going to be pretty decent. Now Udir, however, is pretty damn mana hungry. If you're switching through your stances over and over again, you're going to find yourself going oom um rather quickly, so don't do it too often, but make sure you do it enough because it does affect your passive. As I said as well, you are pretty easy to kite, but you do get some movement speed from your E, and if you did take Ghost, you're going to be pretty hard to stop with all of that movement speed. Against teams with a really high amount of crowd control and slows, you're really going to struggle at getting to the targets. For your masteries, you have a couple different options, but the first one is going 18 ferocity and 12 cunning, going for fervor of battle. This is a really solid mastery setup for a carry Udir. It's going to add a lot of damage with your attack speed and really shred through those squishy targets. I also like to go for meditation usually on Udir because he is so mana hungry and having this mana regeneration is actually pretty nice. It's definitely not required however, but I do like taking it. For my second mastery page, I look to go 18 Resolve and 12 Ferocity, grabbing Courage of the Colossus as my Keystone Mastery instead. This will add some really nice tankiness on Udir, and it's really easy to proc with your E's stun. Therefore, if you want to be a really durable bruiser, or you just want to be a full-on tank, then you would want to consider taking Courage of the Colossus. For my rune setup, I like to go for Attack Speed Reds, Armor Yellows, Magic Resist Blues, and Attack Speed Quints. You can also go for movement speed quints as well, it's very viable if you want some extra movement speed, but having the attack speed quints and reds makes you do an absolute ton of damage early on. Getting through the jungle is going to be incredibly easy, and whenever you get to a squishy target, you're going to absolutely shred through them with your tiger stance and of course all of this attack speed. Since we are a champion running right into the middle of fights, we pick up that armor and magic resist just to be a lot more durable, so we don't just die instantly. For your first summoner spell, you'll want to pick up smite. It's of course required on a jungler because it allows you to clear through the jungle camps, secure objectives like Dragon and Baron, and allows you to buy your jungler item in the first place. Now one viable option for your second summoner spell is Ghost. This summoner is really solid if you're against really strong kiting champions like Ash or Vayne. This summoner spell can actually be the difference in getting towards those champions. Now of course another really solid option would be Flash. You'll want to take this summoner spell if you don't necessarily need the movement speed from Ghost. It's really great if you're against those skillshot champions that have long roots or pulls like Morgana or Blitzcrank. Your passive ability is Monkey's Agility and this can give you some really nice movement speed and attack speed. Udir has no ultimate ability, instead any ability can be learned from the start and each has 5 ranks. Each ability also has a persistent effect which ends only when Udir switches stances though using an ability prevents him from using another for 2 seconds. Udir then gains 5 bonus movement speed and 10% bonus attack speed for 5 seconds every time he uses an ability, stacking up to 3 times. So the second part here is what actually matters. As long as you're properly switching stances, you're going to have a permanent 15 bonus movement speed and 30% attack speed. It's actually pretty significant at the lower levels. When you're going in for a gank, usually you want to switch stances a couple times to have that extra bonus movement speed to close the gap, and when you get there, you're going to have all that bonus attack speed to shred through the target. In team fights, of course, you're just generally going to be switching stances, so this is kind of just automatic. Your Q ability is Tiger Stance, and this is Udir's main source of damage after his rework. When activated, Udir gains bonus attack speed for 5 seconds and causes his next basic attack to deal bonus physical damage over 2 seconds to his target. For the stance, every third basic attack will deal bonus physical damage over 2 seconds to his target. New applications of the damage over time effect on a target already affected deals remaining damage instantly. That means if you have a bunch of attack speed and you're able to get this bleed on people before the 2 second duration, you're going to be doing extra portions of damage. Therefore, of course, a high attack speed build is very viable. So as I said, this is your main portion of damage now. Generally, you'll want to use the bonus movement speed from your E ability to stun the target and then switch to this ability and hit them with all of that damage. 
With that 70% bonus attack speed you get when you swap to this stance, combined with stuff like a Churny Force and perhaps a Blade of the Ruined King, you're going to be doing massive damage. Your W ability is Turtle Stance, and this gives you some nice built-in sustain and extra tankiness. When activated, Udir shields himself for up to 5 seconds and causes his next basic attack to heal him for 2.5% max health, increased by 1% for every 1% missing health, up to a maximum of 5% maximum health. For his stance, every third basic attack will heal him for the same amount. So this is a really solid ability that scales with your maximum health, so usually you're going to want a pretty decent health pool. This is really solid for getting through the jungle because the shield will of course absorb a bunch of damage and you will heal your health as well. In teamfights, you'll want to activate this between your Q and E ability to get some extra tankiness and of course some really nice sustain. It is viable to max second behind our Q ability, but you may also want to max bear second instead. It kind of depends on your personal preference. Your E ability is Bear Stance, and this gives you some really nice mobility that also can stun a single target. When activated for a few seconds, Udir is ghosted, gains bonus movement speed, and dashes towards nearby enemy champions upon stunning them with a basic attack. For the stance, Udir's basic attacks stun his target for one second. This effect cannot occur on the same target more than once every few seconds, which is six seconds. So this is a really strong ability because not only does it give you bonus movement speed which allows you to get to your target, but also allows you to stun them so you can swap stances and do a lot of damage. If you feel like you really have to prioritize your mobility in the game, then you may want to max this one second, but if it's not that big of an issue, I would consider maxing W second instead. Either way, you're going to need a point in this ability pretty early on because it's basically required in a gank. Your R ability is Phoenix Stance, and this one we're not going to really use, but I'm going to cover it briefly. Now this ability used to be the go-to on Udir, it was definitely the strongest back in the day, but with the changes to the Q, the Q is definitely stronger now. The Q max also makes us a much better duelist. Playing Phoenix Udir is still kind of viable I suppose, but Tiger Udir is much stronger. But if you're somebody that likes to play Phoenix Stance Udir instead, then you will want to max this ability first and save your Q for the very very end. With this max, jungle clearing is also going to be a complete joke because of all the AoE damage that you will have from Phoenix Stance. But generally, this is just going to be an ability you don't even put points into until you have no choice in the super late game. For your skill order, you have two main options, but either way you'll want to make sure you max your Q ability first. It's going to be your main source of damage, so as a jungler that's coming in for ganks and whatnot, you definitely have to max that ability first. If you then feel like you're going to have to prioritize your mobility, then you'll want to max your E ability second. The movement speed on this ability does scale, so if you're against hard to reach champions, then you'll want to max that ability second. If you feel like you don't really need mobility and you're going to be soaking a lot of damage, then instead you run max your W ability second. It'll make you a lot tankier and you're going to be able to get a lot of your health back from your lifesteal. In both cases, we want to save our Phoenix stance for last and even then we don't even really use it. Udir's jungle clear isn't that amazing with a tiger stance max, so usually I like to start at bottom side. I'll do the first buff with a leash from my bot lane and then usually do wolves and then the other buff. If I'm really worried about an invade, then I may even skip wolves right off the bat and go to my other main buff. Either way, as long as you do your blue and red buff plus wolves, you will be level 3, and usually I'll look for a quick gank on a push lane. You have very solid early ganks on push lanes if you did take ghost. Make sure you swap stances a few times for the extra movement speed, and then go into the lane with your bear stance and get onto the enemy. If for some reason you went for a phoenix stance max, then you can go for whatever route you want because you do have a lot of AoE damage, and clearing through the jungle is going to be a joke for you. Ganking on Udir is pretty simple. You first want to swap stances a few times before you get to the lane for the bonus movement speed your monkey's agility will provide you. You'll then want to make sure you activate your bear stance for its bonus movement speed so you can close a gap on a target. If you need to, remember you can always use your ghost or flash to help you get there as well. When you're at the enemy you're going to gank, all you have to do is stun them with your bear stance's auto attack and then go into tiger stance for its damage. Then, if you do need to, you can always activate your turtle stance so you can block incoming damage. In a longer gank, make sure you go back into bear stance so you can provide a stun on that target again. When teamfighting on Udir, you'll want to either help on the front line or get onto the enemy back line. This will depend entirely on your team comp and item build. If you're the only tanky champion on the team, then I would suggest you fight on the front line and go for a pretty tanky build. Deal with the front line carries and make sure you help your carries at the same time by using your bear stance's stun to stop the enemies from getting to them. If you already have a very tanky lineup, then you may want to try to get onto the back line instead. Stun an enemy carry with your bear stance and then delete them with your tiger stance. As long as you went for a very high damage build, you should be able to kill them rather easily. Now let's look at a couple hard matchups, and first up is Ivern. Ivern's going to be really frustrating for you because of the snare from his Q ability and slow from his E ability. 
He's going to be able to keep you off his allies, and even if you do get there, his shields are so incredibly strong anyways that they will soak all of your damage. He's definitely a champion you can 1v1 if you do find him alone, so try to do that if possible, but don't chase him too far. His team will rotate and probably kill you. Next here we have Kha'Zix, who's actually one of the few champions that can outduel you. As long as he can find you alone, he can do an absolute insane amount of damage with his isolated Q. Therefore, try not to fight him unless you know you are ahead. If you are ahead of a Kha'Zix, you can easily kill him, but if he's ahead of you, you're not going to have a chance. In a team fight, you'll want to make sure you peel him off your carries as soon as you can with your bear stance so he doesn't delete them. Next up, we have Sheku, who's a very annoying champion to face and can kill you in your own jungle. As we know, Tiger Stance Udir is not the greatest at jungle clearing, so he's going to try to counter jungle you, find you, and kill you. I would say in general, you are a much better late game champion, so try to make it to the late game and then deal with him there. To do this, you'll want to try to get up as many wards as possible, keep vision of him, and try to counter gank him if possible. Last up, I have Warwick, who's another champion that actually has a chance of 1v1ing you. A lot of this is to do with his absurd healing when he is on low health. Against him, try to avoid him as much as possible 1v1 and try to counter gank him. He's got some pretty damn strong ganks, but as long as you're in position, you have some very good counter ganking. Deal with him in this way, and if he does get onto your carries with his ultimate, make sure you stun him off. Now let's look at your item build, which starts with a Hunter's Machete, Refillable Potion, and a Warding Totem. For your core build, you have the Churney Force, your jungler item enchanted with Cinder Hulk, and a Dead Man's Plate. You'll want to get a Churney Force before your full jungler item, as if you were a Hecarim. It's incredibly strong with your low cooldown stances and can output a ton of damage on Udyr. For your jungler item, you could go for either the Stalker's Blade or the Skirmisher's Saber. If you want to make your ganks a little bit stronger by adding a slow, then go for the Stalker's Blade, but if you want some really strong added damage to tanky targets and whatnot, Skirmisher's Saber is fantastic. Now usually I'll go for the Cinder Hulk enchantment because I like a really high health pool and a tanky Udyr, but Warrior and Bloodraiser are also fantastic. Warrior will add some really solid damage early on with the Churney Force, and Bloodraiser scales really well and works great with Fervor of Battle. For your boot options, we have Merc Trez against high AP and CC heavy teams, Ninja Tabbies against high AD teams, Boots of Swiftness for all around mobility, and Boots of Mobility for quicker ganks. For your item pool, we first have the Frozen Heart. This is a really strong armor item which will add a lot of tankiness and also give you 20% more CDR, which will get you CDR capped already when you combine it with your Churney Force. If you're looking for a solid magic resist item, then you could go for the Spirit Visage. This is really, really strong on Udyr because you do have that plus healing from your W, and this will increase it more and is fantastic on Udyr. If you want to add some more damage, you can go for either a Titanic Hydra, Blade of the Ruined King, or a Wit's End. The Titanic Hydra here is one of my favorites because it makes you tankier with a higher health pool and also adds some really solid damage and is great for split pushing. Against a really tanky lineup, Blade of the Ruined King will really help you shred through those targets. Wit's End is also a fantastic item to add some more magic resist and attack speed. You'll become a little bit tankier, yet you're going to do a lot more damage, especially with Fervor of Battle. If you wanted to add more split push, you could of course go for a ZZ Rot Portal. This can put some really nice pressure on the enemy team. If you're against crit heavy champions, then of course you could also get a Randuit. The armor and the health, also fantastic on a tanky champion. For my example full build though, I'll take that core build, get some Merc Treads, and then a Titanic Hydra and a Spirit Visage. You'll do a pretty decent amount of damage with the Cinder Hulk, Trinity Force, and Titanic Hydra, but be a very tanky champion at the same time with your very high health pool, bunch of magic resist, and of course armor. But that's everything I've got for Jungle Udyr. Don't forget to check out the video description below for a link to all my social medias. I stream every night but Tuesday at 7pm Eastern now, and of course that link is down there. As is my Discord server, and my second YouTube channel. Also, if you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure you like and subscribe. But other than that, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy it, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy, have a good day, and peace. Going,